Hi, my name's Rachel, and I'm here to tell you about my story with naltrexone using the Sinclair method. Um, I'm going to qualify myself first and uh, tell you a bit about my story. Started drinking when I was 12. Um, from the first time I drank, I knew that it was going to be a problem. Um, Drinking was the great escape for me. I was suffering from trauma and childhood abuse, and um, alcohol uh, was the great eraser. You know, it um, made me feel confident and comfortable, and it took away the pain that I was feeling. So, fast forward um, to about 21 years old, and I started um, alcohol become a problem. Also, I was using other substances at that point. So I went through treatment. Um, I went four times to different day treatment programs. Um, on the final time, I incorporated AA with it and I was able to eventually get 11 years of sobriety. In those 11 years, I became a mother, got married, um, and started my life. Um, towards the end of my marriage, I kind of stopped going to AA. I probably went for about five or six years and I stayed sober 11. Towards the end of my marriage, as my marriage was um, dissolving, I picked up drinking again. And um, this time, prior to it, when I was younger, it was more binge drinking. But from the moment I started drinking, um, I was 36, uh, I was drinking daily. Um, I had many attempts to Quit drinking in that time it, it lasted the relapse lasted for about three years I had many attempts to to quit um, I would get you know a few weeks under my belt um, and then I would relapse again a few weeks um, so January of 2020 I decided to go to back into treatment um, I went and did a day treatment program. I did um, 100 hours and I did some intense trauma therapy. And I was able to come out of that and I uh, made it to COVID. <laughs> March, March, the end of March 2020 um, is when I relapsed again. Um, so I had a couple of months and, um, you know, I was at a loss. Like at this point, I've, I've gone through treatment again and nothing's working. You know, I can't get it. I can't stop drinking. And um, I'm in a pretty dark place at this point. I can remember laying in bed and wanting to give up. You know, like, um, like if I can't get this, what, um, you know, where's my life going to go? What, how am I going to, how am I going to survive? How am I ever going to be able to be a good parent or a good partner or, healthy, happy, um, and I only drank for probably, I think it was four or five days, um, before, I wasn't even searching this up, this is, this is, the story is pretty amazing how this works, so I was on YouTube scrolling, and, uh, in my recommended came up, um, one of Katie's stories about naltrexone, like, I can't remember how the title was, but it was something, something caught my eye about alcoholism or problem drinking. And um, I went in, I watched the story, and I thought, you know, this is, sounds too good to be true, right? Like, uh, but the person sounded really convincing. So I went and did some more research, and I came across um, Claudia Christian, I think her name is, and I watched her videos. I watched several, several other videos on YouTube, and I was convinced that there was something here, right? Um, from there, I did some reading online and I saw how difficult it was actually for some people to even get naltrexone and um, doctors not knowing about it. And, uh, and I researched the different methods of using it and the Sinclair method obviously um, is, I, I wanna go for extinction, right, from alcohol. So, um, I called up my doctor and made an appointment and he got me in that afternoon, which is crazy because he's always a few weeks, but with COVID, we were, they had moved to telephone calls. So I, I talked to him on the phone and I, I told him that I'd like to use um, naltrexone and, you know, he hadn't heard much about it. He's, he really didn't know, he, he had no success with it. He hadn't, he 
he said that I could basically be his uh, test case. So I said, that'll do. <laughs> um, so I went ahead and uh, got the prescription and I started using it and I'm gonna put up a graph to show you sort of how it worked for me. Um, so immediately after using it, I, I was drinking approximately 30 drinks a week. Um, my first week, I was down to 6.5 drinks um, now that did not stay consistent as you're going to see from the graph or as you can see, um, I, I was experiencing some side effects initially, um, insomnia, um, anxiety, um, I had some weird stuff, like I had like something wrong with my tongue, like I had a scalloped tongue from, uh, I believe, um, clenching my jaw from it, um, but I was at such a loss at this point that it really didn't matter. You know, like I was, as long as it wasn't something that was detrimental, I was going to push through any side effects. It didn't matter if, if I wasn't able to sleep or if I, I didn't care. I'm, I'm done. So uh, I pushed through those. Those side effects only lasted a couple of weeks. And then, um, you know, as you can see, the drinking kind of goes up and down. Um, what you can't see is what happens daily. So immediately I go from drinking daily to drinking kind of um, sort of every other day, sometimes two or three days in a row, but mostly um, not. Mostly I'm, I'm now drinking sort of three to four times a week as opposed to six to seven. Um, and then the drinking it goes up and down over the next uh, several weeks until you hit Let's see, where are we? Till we hit about week 16. Um, that was the time where my boyfriend had actually spoken to me about my drinking. And, you know, he, he was on board. And even though, you know, the journey was hard for him too, right? But he was um, optimistic. And, but he, he believed that I needed to probably make some adjustments to who I was hanging out with, what I was doing. Um, and I came across this part of an article and it reads, to overcome addiction, one must engage in counter conditioning, stimulus control and reinforcement management. Counter conditioning can include finding alternatives to addictive behaviors, especially in high risk situations. Stimulus control can include managing or avoiding situations that cue engagement in an addictive behavior. Example, um, planning ref refusals at a company function or not going to my favorite bar for a while. Reinforcement management inv involves developing and implementing a system of reward to enforce disengagement from the addictive behavior. Just like the addictive behavior was established through reward, so too must disengagement be established via reward. So I started, um, well, I stopped actually um, engaging with certain friends. I knew that I had to make a, a bit more of a change if I wanted this to be successful. And um, even though I can drink, I was now choosing not to go to places that would have me drinking, you know, my favorite restaurants or my favorite bars. Even though it was during COVID, we had, I'm Canadian and we had kind of a lapse there in the summer where it, we, we were out going out to restaurants and things were had relaxed a bit. Um, after that, after I made some of those adjustments, I basically pretty much stopped drinking. I mean, it's it sounds simple, but um, there was some emotional parts to it that I really wasn't prepared for that I'd probably like to talk about is that um, it was sort of... Uh, um, there's a part of it that was like losing something in me, like sort of like losing a very toxic friend or a very toxic relationship, but you're still grieving it. So I went through, it didn't last too long, but I went through a process of kind of the, the withdrawal and, and that was all gone. I'm not talking about physical, I'm talking about an um, emotional, mental release of um, a coping mechanism that I had been using for so long in my life and um, that had worked in its, uh, in its own way, um, counterproductive in many, many 
parts, but during those, you know, moments of drinking, it, it certainly um, did what it was supposed to do. So there was a release from that um, because I had uh, done all that trauma therapy. Um, I believe that I had, um, I had released a lot of negative feelings and a lot of emotions and a lot of hurt and I have come a long way and, and did some, you know, growth and changes in my thinking. So, um, I think that, uh, hand in hand, they go together. I did read a statistic about like AA and naltrexone, um, having a lower success rate, but counseling and naltrexone having a higher success rate. I think like AA and naltrexone, uh, the Sinclair method are a little kind of counterproductive because one is complete abstinence and the other one is, you know, you're drinking and you're kind of un undrinking. I'll read what, um, I think it was, um, it was uh, Claudia that wrote this. The Sinclair Method is a treatment for alcohol addiction that uses a technique called pharm pharmacological extinction. The use of an opiate blocker to turn habit-forming behaviors into habit-erasing behaviors. The effect returns a person's cravings from alcohol to its pre-addiction state. And it was boasting a 78 success rate. So that's basically what happened. I no longer feel a craving for alcohol. I no longer have, when I see alcohol, it no longer gives me that feeling or that rush or that want to have it. Um, it the best way, I mean, I've cut, there's really, it's really hard to find an example for this, but it, I mean, you know, if you're somebody who absolutely loves cheesecake and loved cheesecake for years, and one day you just wake up and you just don't want cheesecake anymore. It's pretty much, that's how it went. Um, I've been to many functions now where I don't have a problem not drinking. Um, it's, I carry the naltrexone on me. I have some in my wallet and some at home at all times, just in case. I'm not trying not to drink. I just don't want to drink anymore. And that's crazy to say because I have wanted to drink since the day I first drank when I was 12 years old. So even my 11 years of sobriety, you know, I wanted to drink the whole time. So, you know, I was sober and I was, um, and it got easier and easier the, the more I was away from it, but it was always like the alluring Pied Piper, right? Um, it was always there. It's not there anymore. I'm gonna tell you about my experience on the first night I took it. I don't, this is, you know, pretty, what a, I'm spiritual, so it's pretty, it was a profound moment. So, um, the first night I took the pill and I waited the hour like you're supposed to. So I took the pill away the hour and I had my first drink and um, I drank the beer and I didn't want another one. And I remember going to bed that night um, and not being able to sleep and feeling an enormous weight lifted off my body. It was like the devil was lifted off of me. I mean, it was profound. I cried. I I was up all night. I didn't sleep at all. And I knew in that moment that this was going to work. From the first pill I took, I knew it was going to work. If I had any, any advice for this, um, it is follow the very simple, basic directions. Take the pill. Wait one hour. Don't wait 45 minutes. Wait one hour. Wait one hour and then have your drink. Drink what you want, because eventually you're not gonna to wanna to drink. Another part to that is, I think in about two months, um, another girl that I know uh, was is doing it at the same time as me, and I'm, I haven't checked in with her, I'm not sure where she's at now, but she was, go last I talked to her, she was kinda of going through a stage I went through around two to three months where you wanna know, like, when's the miracle gonna happen? When's this happening? Um, I guess everybody's different. You know, I've, I've watched a lot of stories. I've seen somebody take up to two years and then there's other people that are three months. Um, mine was like, I think four and a half, five months. Um, but you need to push through that. You know, you need to push through this, the thinking, the, um, you know, why isn't this working for me? Because there were, there were times where I'm at, I believe I was um, into the program Let's see here. I am 16 weeks in and I have a night where I have seven drinks. 
in one night. You just gotta keep pushing through. You know, you don't, you, it's not about kicking your own ass if you've, um, if you drank too much. It's not about that. Just relax and let the medication do what the medication's supposed to do. It, you didn't become an alcoholic overnight and you can't unwind this overnight. You need to give it time to work and, um, and do its job. Let it reprogram your mind um, because it, it does work. It does work. Um, I'm living proof of that. I fought this addiction, I fought this battle for like 20 something years. And um, I'm amazed at the results of this. I'm also amazed that this is not more well known. Nobody told me, not my addictions counselors, not my, um, the local addictions clinic, not at treatment, not my doctor, not my friends at AA, which I have tons of friends at AA. Like nobody knows about this. And that's, um, that's concerning to me because I, I looked at how long this medication's actually been available for and it's quite a while. Um, and it wasn't legal everywhere and it's not covered by medical. And that's another thing too. So the, the pills, they cost Canadian, I'm pay, I was paying um, about $120 for 30 pills with tax. Um, yeah, that's still less than you're going to pay for alcohol and it's to save your life. So I, you know, the cost, you, you just, you just got to do it. Um, I wouldn't worry too much. Uh, you're drinking or you the drinking will become less and so will the pills. So that cost will go down. Like I haven't bought pills in months, you know, um, and I still have much left. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't really know. I just, I really want to encourage people that if you start this, when you hit the wall, which you might, I, and I, I believe because I did and the girl that, that was doing it around the same time as me, I believe that you just, um, you just need to keep going. You need to keep pushing through. Um, take your pill, wait your hour, have your drink. Don't miss, if you don't, don't ever miss taking a pill and drinking, don't. You know, you can't risk that. If you forget your pills, then you're not drinking. That, that would be as simple as that, right? So, um, but don't, like, always have your pills on. You keep a couple in the car, you know, keep them a couple in the glove box. Um, there's those things I've seen on the keychain where you've got, like, a little, you can, like, store a little pill in there. Um, for the most part, I found that most drinking can be prepared for. Um, you know, if you know that you drink every night at eight o'clock, then at seven o'clock you take your pill, right? If you drink right when you get home from work, then take your pills, you're leaving work. Um, there's, it's a really simple formula and a really simple method um, to cure this awful disease that has killed millions of people and destroyed millions and millions of families. It's a very simple process. You just need to follow it. Um, yeah, and and to f I I don't know why the reason I'm doing this video is because I feel like I owe it back. I want to pay it forward. Um, I have no idea why people don't know about this drug. I have no idea. Um, the only thing that I can come up with is that alcoholism is a far bigger um, market than the cure for alcoholism. Um, it's a you know billion dollar industry so uh yeah but this could have saved many lives and many families and people from complete despair so take the pill wait an hour have your drink wait for the miracle to happen don't push yourself and uh and don't be hard on you and don't let other people be hard on you because they, they'll try you know, people don't understand this um, and they will try to kind of put down the method or they won't understand, right? So just um, don't listen to anybody. Come on YouTube and listen to us, us people that have walked through it and that know the solution because there is a solution here for you. Uh, the only way that this couldn't be a solution, and in my opinion, I don't know, there can be other reasons, but would be if you actually had medical problems with the pills. They are a little hard on the liver, which obviously isn't too good if you're a problem drinker for many, many years because you probably have liver problems already. But uh, yeah, this is kind of a life or death sort of situation here. So um, I encourage you to push through what you can. Talk to your doctor, obviously. Um, yeah, and if you go to a doctor and they won't give you these pills, then go to another doctor. Go to the walk-in clinic, go anywhere. Just somebody will give you them. 
I know that you can order them online too. I, I don't really know about that though. Um, I would just probably, I would go until somebody said yes, because it's that important. You're that important. You're that important. So that's my story. Naltrexone has um, changed my life and I'm extremely grateful. And I'm extremely grateful for Katie for her channel. So you should like the video and hit subscribe because um, it's videos like hers that are saving lives and helping people. And, uh, and Claudia and all the other people out there that are brave enough to come online and tell their story. And um, I congratulate you and thank you.